Today in the news, AMD is feeling hot, Intel is working on a Phantom, and no one is safe. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Their RX 5700 series have been pretty popular. Not only that, but the buying frenzy is about to get wilder, with custom cards hitting the shelves starting this week. Sapphire's Pulse RX 5700 series is hitting the shelves today, and Asus has a few coming up this week and next week. But in the last few weeks, all we had were reference card designs, and some customers were reporting pretty high temperatures. Some were seeing temps of around 76 degrees average, with the hotspot being all the way up to 94 degrees Celsius. AMD's response to that, it's totally fine. In a blog post, AMD says that their new temperature monitoring system allows the GPUs to continually ramp up until one of the sensors reaches the hotspot or junction temperatures. That's 110 degrees Celsius. That's literally boiling hot. Thanks to the upcoming third-party designs though, if you buy an RX 5700 now, you'll probably not see that happen. But for you guys who pulled the trigger at launch, this shows that you shouldn't worry too much about high temperatures on your GPU. Moving on to Intel, so far the company has released two premium tiny form factor computers called NUX or Next Unit of Computing. In 2016, there was the Skull Canyon NUC, which sported an i7-6770HQ with Intel's highest and integrated graphics, the Iris Pro 580. Then there was last year's Hades Canyon NUC with an Intel i7-8809G, which sported some AMD RX Vega M graphics. As you can see, both models sported some kind of graphics that wasn't really comparable to what we find in the desktop market. Well, according to Fanless Tech, which spotted a few slides on the Chip Hell forum, Intel is about to change that with their next generation, Phantom Canyon. As you can see from the slides, this is still a concept, but the specs do look quite impressive for such a small form factor PC. It would feature a Tiger Lake USQ for the CPU, presumably an i7, like on all of the previous NUCs, with either an RTX 2060 or a GTX 1660 Ti for graphics. Tiger Lake is Intel's second generation 10 nanometer process, so technically it's already at 10 nanometer plus. First gen 10 nanometer is Ice Lake, which is coming for the holiday this year. Tiger Lake will also apparently feature PCIe Gen 4. Now, Intel has been working on their first workstation NUC, codenamed Quartz Canyon, which features either a 45 watt 8 core Xeon E or a 45 watt 8 core 9th gen Intel i7 with support for a discrete GPU, but the form factor on that one is quite big. Another gaming oriented NUC called Ghost Canyon is also in the works with a 45 watt i9-9980HK, but once again, it will be much bigger than the traditional NUCs, probably because of the higher power consumption and the cooling needed for it. It looks like Intel is going to squish the case back down to their old form factor for the Tiger Lake equipped Phantom Canyon NUC thanks to the much lower 28 watt of the Tiger Lake U processor. Add to that the 2060 in that form factor and you got a pretty impressive NUC. Since the Phantom Canyon NUC is coming in either 2020 or 2021, the CPU will probably feature Gen 12 Intel graphics, which should be based on the XE architecture, but I wonder if Intel will have a version available with some discrete XE graphics instead of the integrated one. Moving on, no one is safe. Cybersecurity firm Eclipsium published a report titled Screwed Drivers. Basically, over 40 drivers from at least 20 different vendors, including the big three, Intel, AMD, and Nvidia, are susceptible to what is called a privilege escalation attack through the Windows drivers. Now, I say Windows drivers, but Microsoft didn't write those. Third-party vendors did and provided the drivers to Microsoft, and Microsoft just signed them. But that doesn't absolve them, though. Both the vendor and Microsoft are at fault here. It's a pretty dangerous one too. Any malware running in the user space could scan it for a vulnerable driver on the victim's machine and gain full control over the system. The worst part is that this attack could burrow all the way down to the UEFI BIOS, which would not be erased after a traditional system wipe. Hopefully, they find a fix for that soon. I mean, even the tools to update the drivers are apparently affected. 
In other news, Samsung has just unveiled its brand new 108 megapixel ISO Cell Bright HMX camera sensor. Now, since this is coming from Samsung, you might think it's destined to be on a smartphone. And you'd be right. Apparently, the uh, Xiaomi Mix 4 could be the first according to Ice Universe on Twitter. As you probably already know, megapixel count doesn't make a great camera, but in this case, the sensor size is also bigger, meaning better low light performance and more accurate color readout. Smartphone may Maker Realme also showcased some photos taken with a 64 megapixel phone, which isn't out yet, but it uses Samsung's 64 megapixel ISO cell sensor. The images are huge at 40 megabytes, and the detail level is actually quite amazing for a smartphone if we look at these examples. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you've got any comments or questions, don't hesitate to put them down below. I'll be there all day responding. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. God damn it. How can it be so hot when it's raining? Well, actually, that makes sense. It's humid. Anyways, take care.